the overall goal of Antoine's equation is to model or develop a function that will relate the vapor pressure of some species I to a temperature. And the equation that people will come across time and again is this log base 10 of P, and this is P saturation or P vapor pressure, is equal to some constant A minus B over T plus C. And this is a very generic equation. The constants A, B, and C depend both on what species you're, you care about as well as what units your temperature T uh, and your pressure P have. And so it is very critical to make note of what the units are and uh, when you are analyzing this kind of equation. And so in practice, uh, we have resources that we turn to to look up in tables these constants a, b, and c. And the Dortmund Data Bank, abbreviated DDB, uh, is one uh, very reliable and reputable source. And so uh, what I did is I took a screenshot here of what you would find on their website, uh, and this is for methane, so CH4. At 300 Kelvin, they told me that uh, we've got uh, a, B, and C, as well as this temperature range that would for which these parameters are valid. Um, and then they also have other uh, constants that are valid for different temperature ranges, but it is very important to make a note of these temperature ranges because Antoine's equation, as we learn in thermodynamics, will only be applicable in certain situations. And that, But when it is applicable, it can help us a lot. So make note of the temperature range, and if you're within this temperature range, we can use this data um, effectively. Now, this isn't that great of an example for methane because this temperature range is very low, uh, and so what we, it, it's not very helpful to us uh, in the real world. But what you will get from this is the notion that methane is a very light component. Now. To turn to the example that we're going to be working through in our DME synthesis reactor, we're trying to extract DME from all these other components, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and methane. And so we'll know that based on looking up some of these values that DME and carbon dioxide are significantly heavier components. And what this term heavy refers to is it means that they will have uh, significantly lower vapor pressures and higher boiling points. So these are going to exist as liquids uh, much more likely at normal conditions or closer to normal conditions than the other components. And so what you do is, and I did this previously, is you look up the tabulated values for A, B, and C of carbon dioxide and dimethyl ether, and uh, you will you can create plots in MATLAB by creating a temperature vector T and uh, inputting the parameters A, B, and C accordingly. And so what we get after we plot our Antoine equation are things that look like this. And what you'll see here is that at about 20 degrees C or 27 degrees C, this is 300 Kelvin, um, that's about room temperature, our carbon dioxide has a vapor pressure of 66.2 atmospheres. And so what that means is if we're at room temperature and we compress a mixture down to 70 ATM such that our total pressure is greater than the vapor pressure, carbon dioxide will exist as a, uh, as a liquid. Now, because the other components in the stream we were interested in are significantly lighter, they will all exist in the vapor phase. And so at 300 Kelvin and 70 ATM, we'll have CO2 
and DME condense into the liquid phase. And phases are very easy to separate because you'll have your liquid drain out the bottom of your uh, separator or partial condenser and you'll have your vapor phase exit through the top because of the difference in density there will be a buoyant force for the vapor phase to escape your unit. Now if you now wanted to separate carbon dioxide from the DME All we need to do now is lower the pressure of our second downstream partial condenser. And because if we made, so if we made our pressure 17 atmospheres, DME, if we check here at 17 atmospheres, we'll see that DME is has still has a lower vapor pressure but now um, co2 uh, will begin to enter the vapor phase and so uh, dme stays in the liquid but the co2 enters the vapor phase And so uh, this kind of gives a, a real world example of why we should care about thermodynamics in practice and how we can use things like the Antoine equation uh, when we're trying to figure out in chemical process design as a chemical engineer, what kind of optimal conditions you should be running a partial condenser at uh, and also the sequence in which you should be separating your mixture to achieve the most efficient uh, mechanisms. And so I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.